Okay. Hello everyone and good evening. Welcome to another episode of Dr. Stable here at Plated Prescriptions and we are so happy to be with you again and today we will be serving you another hearty four course meal. I am Lorraine, the in-house physical therapist of Plated Prescription and with me is my co-host Patty Queenie. Hello everyone! Greeting all our viewers on Facebook and we are also live on YouTube at Plated Prescriptions. Hello Lorraine! Kamusta? We have, we have 11 viewers so far. So we hope that you are hungry guys because we have prepared a full pack four course meal from hors d'oeuvres, appetizers, main course and of course panghimagas. We also have dessert. We cannot serve these literally but stay tuned so you will know what we are talking about. Siyempre, today is another special episode kasi hindi lang isa, hindi lang dalawa, kundi buong familia ang ating mga guests ngayong gabi. And they will share with us the hows and whys of going plant-based Yes. So this family has truly been an inspiration to many, and you will get to meet them tonight. Go, Lorraine. That's right. That's right, Epiquini. And in case for some, for some of those who have missed it, you know, previously in our health talk series, we discussed about health and beauty and how our speaker, a former beauty queen, shared her tips in achieving the journey of plant-based diet. This time with our new guest is another spectacular series. So, fasten your seatbelts, everyone, as we embark on another marvelous journey to a wonderful new you. Yes, but before we start, may I request our viewers to please share this stream now. I'm sure a lot of um, families will be blessed tonight if you will if you will share because the sharing is caring. So to start this um, program, let's have our hors d'oeuvres first. Our in-house doctor and chef has prepared bite-sized health info about the blue zone. So listen well and be inspired. Doc April. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, I prepared to you a video about the blue zone, so let me just share my screen. John Butner was determined to uncover the specific aspects of lifestyle and environment that led to longevity. And so he teamed up with the National Geographic and the National Institute on Aging, and together they found five areas with the highest rates of centenarians. People at these places reached the age of 100 years old at 10 times greater rates than in the United States. The Danish twin study found out that only 20% of our lifespan is determined by genes and the remaining 80% is dictated by lifestyle. So where can we find these blue zones and what is their secret for longevity? Stay tuned and learn more where centenarians live.
There are five blue zone areas in the world. Number one is Loma Linda, California, USA, the only city among the five areas. Number two, Nicoya, Costa Rica. Number three, Sardinia, Italy. Number four, Ikaria, Greece. And number five, Okinawa, Japan. Let's talk about Nicoya. Nicoyans spend only 15% of what Americans spend on healthcare. Faith and family play a strong role in Nicoyan culture. They also have what we call plan de vida or reason to live. This helps Nicoyan elders maintain a positive outlook in life and keeps them active. They also eat little to no processed foods. They also get a lot of antioxidant rich tropical fruits. Next is Ikaria. People here live 8 years longer than Americans do. They also have 20% less rates of cancer, half the rates of heart disease, and almost no dementia. They eat a variation of the Mediterranean diet with lots of fruits, vegetables, whole grains, beans, potatoes, and olive oil. They also get a downshift regularly, a mid-afternoon break. According to this article, people who nap regularly have 35% lower chances of dying from heart disease. Probably because napping can lower the stress hormones in our body and gives our heart a rest. But remember, if you want to take a nap, keep it short, just 20 to 30 minutes. Second to the last is Okinawa. Okinawa is home to the longest lived women and they have three secrets to longevity. Number one is Ikigai. Ikigai means reason to live. This gives them that sense of purpose and keeps them motivated and resilient through all the challenges in life. Number two is Mawai. Mawai refers to a lifelong group of friends. It also means it's a support group for social, financial, health, or spiritual needs. In Okinawa, children at five years old are already put into these committed social groups. In one particular Mowai that Dan found, the group has already been together for 97 years and the average age of their group is 102 years old. Number three is Hara Hachibu. Hara Hachibu is a dietary rule that means you must eat only until you're 80% full. You see, your brain is 10 to 20 minutes behind your stomach. So when you eat only up to 80% full, you're actually already full. With Hara Hachibu, the average Okinawan eats only 1,800 calories per day compared to the average American that eats close to 2,500 calories. Last but not least is Loma Linda. It is an Adventist community in California that outlives the average American by 10 years. Taking their diet directly from the Bible, they consume a vegan diet of green leafy vegetables, fruits, nuts, and legumes. They also keep the Sabbath and have a weekly downshift for 24 hours per week. Many of the Adventists are still active up to their 90s. Take for instance Dr. Ellsworth Wareham and Marge Jutton. Dr. Ellsworth Wareham is a cardiothoracic surgeon. He has performed 12,000 surgeries and continued to assist and observe younger surgeons even up to his mid-90s. At 100 years old, he continues to drive and does his own gardening and lawn maintenance. Dr. Wareham said, I think it's important for an individual to have some security and peace in his life. And I get that from believing in a loving, caring God. And so if he is in charge of my life, why sit around and worry? I mean, he takes care of the universe. He can certainly take care of me, so I don't worry. Dr. Wareham died in 2018 at the age of 104 years old. Marge Jutton. Marge Jutton is a retired nurse. She is said to be quick-witted and funny. At age 105, she would wake up early in the morning at 5.30 a.m., read her Bible, then cook a breakfast of slow-cooked oatmeal and nuts, dates with soy milk, and a prune juice shooter. After that, she'd ride her stationary bike for 30 minutes, then drive, going to her volunteer jobs at seven different organizations. She died at 2011 at the age of 106 years old, filled with a life of happiness and fulfillment. So what are the common denominators among the centenarians in these blue zones? Number one, move naturally. Number two, of course, eat plant heavy. 
Number three, find faith. Attend faith-based services. It actually adds four to 14 years to your life. Number four, purpose. Purpose will keep you motivated and resilient through the challenges of life. Don't forget Hara Hachibu or the 80% rule when you eat. Next, prioritize your family, loved ones first. Then next, find the right tribe, the right support group, the right community. And lastly, don't forget to have regular downshifts to ease yourself from stress. So thank you for listening and I hope that you learned something from our centenarians in these blue zones and that you're inspired to pursue health and find that long quality and happy life with your family and community. Thank you very much, Doc April, for sharing with us those bite-sized health info. I think we might take away for that um, blue zones, five areas of blue zones, is that in Okinawa, Japan, they have the longest live women. No, um, it must be because it's really important to be for women to have this support group. No, for mm -hmm. the <laughs> resilience of a woman. <laughs> yeah. So, do you want to be a centenarian, huh, Lorraine? <laughs> That's amazing, right? Imagine, 106 years old, and then he was living his full life. He was not bedridden wow. at all. Diba? Amazing talaga. Now, <laughs> okay, so to wet or stimulate, stimulate your appetite for more knowledge on health, let's have our appetizers. We are going to have a trivia game that will be participated by our viewers on Facebook and YouTube, and we encourage everyone to join Two Truths and a Myth. Ayan. So we will be reading three statements and you guys have to guess which statement is a myth. You can just type one, two, or three. And the first one to type the answer correctly will win a prize. Okay. Pareak naman dyan, mga besh. <laughs> Pareak naman dyan. Baka, uh, yan. Maga heart heart tayo dyan. Magla like like. Ganyan. Kung naintindihan ng ating mechanics for our trivia game this evening. Okay. Alright. So, let's start with the first set of statements. Lorraine. All right, Ate Queen. So for our first set of statement, we have statement number one. Protein is used to build and repair muscle tissues. Statement number two, muscle growth is stimulated by strength training. And statement number three, protein requirements are difficult to meet on a plant-based diet. All right, timer starts now. All right. Okay, my like answer 23. <laughs> burn. Ano na? Burn. <laughs> Okay, what's the correct answer, Laureen? Okay, so the myth here is protein requirements are difficult to meet on a plant-based diet. Why is it a myth? Because eating a variety of legumes, nuts, and grains can meet your protein requirements per day. Okay, so those who answered number three, you are correct. And the first one who answered the correct answer, <laughs> the correct answer will get a prize. Okay, congratulations. Now let's go to the second set of our statements. All right, number one, a whole food plant-based diet is the same with veganism and vegetarianism. Mm -hmm. And number two, Foods low in ano daw? Okay, ulit. Foods low in calories does not always mean healthy. And number three, nutrient dense foods are whole, unrefined, and unprocessed foods. Ano po ang myth sa tatlong statements na ito? Ready, set, go. Okay. All right. 
So, I only see one, two people na nag-answer. And okay, I already I already I already saw someone na correct ang kanya answer. And the correct answer is number 1. Okay, so the myth among the three statements is a whole food plant-based diet is the same with veganism and vegetarianism. So, medyo na confuse ang marami dito. Is it the same yung veganism if you're a vegan or a vegetarian? Same lang ba ang inyong mga kinakain? No, no, no. That's that's a myth. So, a vegan diet completely excludes all animal products in the in the diet and often in the lifestyle, including dairy, eggs, and meat. But you can also be a vegan. Hindi ka nga kumakain ng mga meat and all those stuff on all those dairy products. Pero medyo um, empty calories naman at saka junk pala ang kinakain mo. You can be a vegan but not healthy. And vegetarianism includes eggs and dairy but does not include meat and poultry and fish in their diet. Okay, so those who answered number one, correct po kayo. So myth po iyan. Alright, before we go to our Last and final set of statements. Let's have a short break. Let's watch this. Our gut is the home of trillions of living microorganisms. In order to live, multiply, and perform their functions, they need to be fed sufficiently, or else they will look for other sources of food within our body, which will eventually make us sick. Fruits and vegetables contain prebiotics, such as fructooligosaccharides, the right food for our gut bacteria. However, proper amount may not be acquired through natural food only. Hence, supplementation is needed too. Feed your gut with Fologo. All right, welcome back to Doctor's Table for our last and final set of statements. Our winner will not only receive a prize from Fologo, he or she will win a 50% discount from our upcoming wellness program on February 21 to March 21, 2021. Okay? So get ready, guys. Get ready. Sa mga answer natin dyan. Go, Lorraine. Third set. All right. <laughs> so for a third set um, of truth and myth, we have statement number one. Avoiding excess salt can reduce calcium loss. Statement number two, dairy products are the only source of calcium. And statement number three, animal protein tends to leach calcium from the bones and encourage passage to the urine. Ready? Go! Okay, so for our myth is dairy products are the only source of calcium. So that is not true because plant-based resource, uh, plant-based sources of calcium are legumes, um, low oxalate greens, nuts, and seeds, and they are also more ready absorbable than dairy. Nice. Very good. So marami ang nakakuha ng correct answer. Congratulations yeah. to the first one who answered it correctly. Ayan. Very good job, guys. And yeah, stay tuned for more. All right. So that's about it for our appetizer. So to all of you who participated in our trivia game, please stay until dessert is served because we have prizes for you guys from Foligo. Thank you everyone for joining our game and to learn more about plated prescriptions, please watch this video. When life gives us unlimited options, how often do we make the right choice for our health? Would you choose to eat meat or plant-based options? Would you rather make physical activity part of your daily routine or just spend one more hour surfing the internet? Would you prefer coffee or a glass of water? Breathe fresh air or smoke a pack of cigarettes? Choose positivity or dwell on the downside of things. The choices we make every day shape our health. Small choices become actions, actions become habits, and habits become our way of life. Our bodies, we only have one to last our lifetime. It will thank us when we make good choices, but it will suffer when we don't. Welcome to Plated Prescriptions. 
We are a team of healthcare professionals that uses evidence-based lifestyle therapeutic approaches to promote overall health and well-being. Let us help you prevent, even treat your existing heart disease, cancer, diabetes, and other lifestyle-related diseases by leading you to a whole food plant-based diet, regular physical activity, restorative sleep, stress management, avoidance of risky substances, and positive social connection. Holistic approach for your health and well-being. All these from the comforts of your own home. At Plated Prescriptions, we help you make the right choices. All right, hello guys, and welcome back. So, two is better than one. But more is better than two. So yes, you heard it right. Our speaker for today are not your usual nuclear family. They are a plant-based family. Yes, aren't you excited? We have a guest. We our guest for tonight is a plant-based family, and they will be talking about how it is very possible to raise a modern family healthy in an unhealthy world. Okay, pakilala na natin, Lorraine. Okay, at the green. So, our first guest is Dr. Johan Kim Lanyans. He is a medical doctor who is really passionate about health, that he brought lifestyle medicine in the Philippines. In fact, he is considered as the father of lifestyle medicine in our country, and he's also the first international fellow of the American College of Lifestyle Medicine. Hello. <laughs> Hi, Doc. Hello, and... <laughs> so I have with me my two boys and my wife has the other one. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so here. I'm just excited. To <laughs> yes. Um, welcome to Dr. Stable at Plated Prescriptions. So our second guest is his wife, Suzanne Glesman, yes, a medical technologist who is equally passionate in health in the health ministry that she took up master's in public health and also trained to become a professional plant-based chef. She is currently the patient relations director of Adventist Medical Center and Colleges. Hi, ma'am. Hi, everyone. Hello. Yes, good to see you guys. Yes, Lorraine, please introduce our gentlemen. All right. Our cute okay. gentlemen. So, <laughs> though they are both medical professionals, they are amazing and hands on parents to three healthy and energetic sons whom they raise on a plant based diet. We have Diesel Wave Manez, um, Dozer Win Manez. All right, and Dunzel Wade Manez. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so Diesel, so that naka DW talaga tong ano nila no? <laughs> Ang kanila initials. I like it. So they're 13, 11, and 8, right? Yes. Okay. I can't wait to hear how they were able to do so in this day and age. So hello again to the Manias family and welcome to Dr. Stable. Please greet our viewers now. Hi, everyone. Say hi, everyone. Hi, hi everyone. Hi. Welcome to Closing Prescriptions. <laughs> <laughs> Ayan. All right. So welcome to our main course. So to our viewers here on Facebook and YouTube, I am encouraging you to comment down your questions and thoughts in line with the topic and our guests would gladly answer it. 
So. Yes, of course, sa mga nanay at mga tatay dyan who are, who are very, you know, curious. Especially me, I'm very <laughs> curious, you know. <laughs> so, please comment down below your answers, okay? I'm sure our guest is also willing to address and answer your questions. So, don't be shy. Just comment down below. <laughs> All right, let's go with the first question, Lorraine. Okay, so Dr. Johan, you are you will be my first <laughs> ask. So, I mean, so doc, why and how did you get into lifestyle medicine? Wow, that is a long <laughs> story. Okay, <laughs> go <me>. long, doc. <laughs> uh, so, I, I used to be um, my, my goal in my life when I was in medical school was to become a cardiologist. You know? So that path took me to first do internal medicine. I kind of got frustrated during my residency because as I tried to prescribe medications to my patients, they would not actually get better to the point where they are healed. Maybe some of their symptoms would improve a little, but then over time they would come back and say, Doc, it's not working anymore. So, so this would be a routine, you know, it would be like a cycle. They come back, more medication, more medication. And then I noticed that one medication would have a side effect. So I would give another medication for the side effect of the first medication and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. And eventually I had several patients come to me where their kidneys weren't functioning properly anymore. Their liver wasn't functioning properly. And we were seeing the side effects of some of these medications because of long-term use of them. So again, it's a long story. Let me just cut it short. Long story short, I said, this is probably not for me because what I wanted to do as a physician was to get people better. Okay, so that was the goal. That was the goal. The goal was to help them improve their condition until they were well and they didn't even need medication because they were already better. So I got depressed with my residency and eventually I had to quit. So I quit, I was depressed, I was looking for answers and I found lifestyle medicine. So that's a short cut of the very long story. I found about found out about lifestyle medicine. I thought there would be lifestyle medicine in the Philippines. So I looked for lifestyle medicine uh, places, you know, hospitals where they would have lifestyle medicine practicing it, lo and behold, there was not any. So I had to uh, go to the United States to get trained as a lifestyle medicine physician there. And I said, lifestyle medicine has to start in the Philippines because this is the answer to the chronic conditions that are killing the majority of Filipinos today. And so uh, I was able to finish my a fellowship in the United States, I became a fellow of uh, lifestyle medicine. I brought lifestyle medicine here. Again, initially I thought I had there had to be someone who also was into lifestyle medicine in the Philippines. Unfortunately, it so happened I was the first. So, you know, I never planned to be the first, but that, <laughs> that, that, led, that God led me to. So, yeah, I became the first lifestyle medicine physician in the Philippines. And maybe this was the path that God wanted me to take. So lifestyle medicine is here to stay. And uh, yeah, that's a long story, short and very, very short. And very <laughs> yeah. Wow, thank you for that. Imagine, of course, lifestyle medicine is not a trend. It's not known to the Filipino people. But praise the Lord, Doc, for starting, you know, I for it has it will take bravery and you know all those stuff to start something that is that is not well known to a lot of people it was pretty but, tough so yeah yeah asking, um physicians my colleagues my my own peers uh kind of looked at me funny like what are you trying to do what what are you what is this lifestyle medicine um I don't want to say bad words. So what is this like <laughs> medicine uh, foolishness, okay? Foolishness oh. that, that you were getting into. Uh, but eventually, as they saw the truth emerge, as mm. many more people got better through lifestyle medicine, uh, you know, I just had to keep going. I just had to uh, 
uh, not mind what other people were saying. And because I knew that this would help the Filipinos, I had to keep going. And uh, thank God we now have lifestyle, the Philippine College of Lifestyle Medicine, which is, of course, here to stay. Nice. I can't imagine what you have gone through, the criticisms and all those. But yeah, I <laughs> thank God for making you strong, you know, despite and in spite of everything. So yeah, let me ask Mom Suzanne. As a mom who is plant-based, how was the experience during pregnancy and lactation? So, you know, coming from... <laughs> so, mag-jump tayo, no? <laughs> from the... <laughs> <laughs> so, mala, ma, medyo mata, mataas yung pinag, ano natin, pinag jump on. Okay, go ma'am, Suzanne. Okay, let me start with my pregnancy. My pregnancy was difficult, not because we decided to go fully plant-based in terms of diet. It was difficult because I suffered from hyper emesis gravidarum. <laughs> okay. I could not eat without vomiting. During, yeah. yeah. During my first uh, pregnancy, it was so bad that I would even vomit after drinking water. I kept vomiting without even eating anything. <laughs> so because of this, my husband had to keep me hydrated and fed through IV fluids um, while staying at home. So it... Um, I got so thin because of not being able to eat. It came to a point when my tears would just flow like a river just by looking at the food in front of me because I know that the moment I would eat it, I would just vomit it. <laughs> that lasted almost two trimesters before I was able to slowly eat normal plant-based uh, whole foods again and when i was finally able to eat i ate everything especially langka papaya kangkong malunggay lots of kangkong and lots of malunggay <laughs> <laughs> lactation uh, lactation was fun because by then i could eat a lot and my husband said that i remain sexy <laughs> <laughs> i ate what food was available and there were lots of food to pick from. I produced so much milk. I was even able to donate to mummies who were wow. also breastfeeding. Wow. And had to stop due to sickness or just could not produce enough milk for their baby. One mom, in exchange for breast milk, gave me bundles of malunggay. So that was <laughs> the end lactation journey. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I can relate with the uh, ano hyperemesis gravidarum grave. <laughs> yeah, but le le may I just ask? Um, so, um, Doc Johan is already into lifestyle medicine when you were pregnant. Is that right? Yes. Ah, yeah. Okay. So, so Doc, it was already you know you are the first um what you call this patient. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Okay. Yeah, let's go. Thank you for sharing that, um, Mom Suzanne. Let's go to the next question, Lorraine. Okay, so let's go back to you, uh, Dr. Han. So okay. is, <laughs> is plant-based diet expensive for a family? I mean, what is the weekly budget for food? Uh, before we went completely plant-based, uh, my wife and I, no uh, wala pang mga kids, right? We would go out and eat stuff like pizzas, for example, right? Um, so these uh, vegetarian foods where there's milk and cheese and, and eggs. Mm -hmm. and, stuff. and we noticed that our budget was was pretty high. I mean, not the budget, but the money that we were spending for these uh, processed type foods were quite high. Uh, now, when we had a family, uh, well, the thing is, we started a family, we were already um, on a plant-based whole food diet, but I, I can't really compare uh, our budget from a previous, uh, you know, lifestyle without uh, plant-based whole foods. But when you look at the budget that my patients save, okay, the money that my patients save, 
uh, from eating meat-based foods, which are very expensive. Like, for example, a kilo of pork or a kilo of beef would cost as much. There's special cuts that cost as much as 500 pesos per kilo. Compare that to one kilo of mongo. Mongo is like 70 pesos, right? And when you cook mongo, that one kilo becomes three kilos. <laughs> and you can eat so much more with a smaller budget. That's just one simple example. Another thing is instead of fish, for example, or chicken, which also costs quite a lot per kilo, how about buying a kilo of fruits, of vegetables, right? Those are much cheaper, and yet you get more. I mean, imagine a kilo of malungai. How much malungai would that be? Wow. <laughs> <laughs> And it's so cheap. I, that's why I know that um, you can actually uh, spend less on a plant-based diet, because especially a whole food plant-based diet, because what you're buying are whole foods, not processed foods. Processing usually adds value to the food, and that's why it's more expensive. So plant-based whole foods are always much cheaper than processed foods or animal-based foods. Oh, that's wonderful. That's a good news yeah. for all the moms and dads out here. Okay. So if you want to, you know, maybe you are on a tight budget, plant-based is the way to go. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Yes. Mongo. Mongo for two weeks. Or <laughs> Mongo for a month. <laughs> but we that... <laughs> so we need wedding, I know, beans, uh, red beans, pinto beans, lentils. So we have no options. So <laughs> <bra> <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, sige. So if you want, oh, one fourth na mungo, one fourth ng red beans, one fourth na. The ba, doc, no? There's so, there's just so much um, variety that we can that we can get from that. Yeah. Okay. So take note, mga mommies and dads here watching us here at Plated Prescriptions. Ayan po. Hindi po, hindi expensive ang. Um, Ang pag, ang, you know, if we take the plant-based route, it's not expensive po pala. True. Okay? Yeah. And you're feeding your children and your family healthy whole food um, foods. <laughs> okay. All right. So let's ask Ma'am Suzay naman. Of course, both of you are busy and working. What are your go-to meals? Kasi ngayon, parang mas gusto natin yung mga instant, ma mabilis lang lutuin, ganyan. So, what are your go-to meals? And yeah, because you're both busy and working. So, that is a very easy question for us. Oh, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, we feed on whole rolled oats. Our mm. canned beans, frozen beans, veg frozen vegetables, and fresh, completely prepared foods sautéed in water with garlic and onions, sprinkled with herbs and seasonings, or air-fried potato wedges and tomato sticks. There. <laughs> well, so so like those that, are uh, air-fried potato wedges, right? Right. <laughs> <laughs> Oh nga no, ang bibilis nun. Right? So you just um nakastock na yon lahat. Tapos ano na lang, air fry, tapos um saute this and that, boil this and that. Yeah, wala nang madaming ano-ano. Yeah, uh, the night before yung mga frozen vegetables natin and beans, uh, nilalagay namin sa refrigerator from freezer to refrigerator para mag uh, melt siya or by the following day or pagdating na umaga, ready to cook na siya. Wow. Tips. <laughs> what a good tip. Yeah. And so the kids are really, you know, I mean, of course, the karamihan ng mga kabataan ngayon, talagang um, they're so picky when it comes to um, vegetables. But your boys has, you know, yung kinamulatan nila, ganun na po ba? <laughs> they, have, they, eat, they eat all the vegetables and fruits. 
hindi so, sila pinili. So, lahat, they just eat anything. <laughs> Kahit ang balaya, <laughs> they eat it. Basta yeah, sa... Kasi, <laughs> kasi from the womb pa lang, ganun na yun, no? Siguro na train din yung kanilang taste buds. Yes, yun. Wow. That's amazing. Uh, well, growing up. Yeah, so let's let's ano, let's ask naman the boys this time. Sige. Ayan, ayan. Let's ask um I oh, sino gusto mong iano, itanong sino gusto mong tanungin, Lorraine? Uh si Diesel, Diesel. <laughs> Uh, diesel sila ata lahat. <laughs> Letter D and M. Hi, Kuya. <laughs> okay, Diesel, Dozer, Donzel pala. Kuya okay. Diesel, Kuya Dozer. Diesel wave. Ayan, okay. So, ano yung usually mga struggles nyo in school being plant-based? I mean, paano yung nakakook up yung mga food? I'm sorry, but I think they can't understand. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, what are your struggles at school being plant-based? I mean, how do you cope up with it? I really don't have that much struggles being a plant-based eater because my parents always tell me to be positive and, and to spread positivity, so... <laughs> Yeah, really not that much. Ah, uh, so wala silang struggle. How about um of course you have you eat do you eat lunch at school or maybe during field trips, of course, you have to make baon. You have to prepare you have to pack lunch. snacks at the right? Uh-huh. So and then you see other kids they're having all those all sorts of stuff, all sorts of food and you guys are Having, of course, because, Mom, I think it's not a problem with them because Mom Suzanne is a chef, <laughs> so, so she cooks really nice. So they will not, they will not envy the kind of food that their that their other classmates have. I guess is that right? Um, what's the name of uh, Dozer Dozer Wind? Is that right? <laughs> I'm a story. Well, okay. I don't really have a struggle. Um, they don't make fun of me or tease me, but they just respect. Ah, uh, that's nice. Yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> that's nice. So you don't have any experience that they tease you pala? Well, well this is not really a struggle, but when I was going through, one of my classmates will pull out her meat from her lunchbox and escape <laughs> me with it. <laughs> oh, wait, again, 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 again? Louder. Louder, louder. One of my friends in school, when I was going to would pull out her meat from her lunchbox and chase me with it. Taste me with their meat. Oh, they like taste. <laughs> oh, so taste how do you? Hard. Yeah, I see. So how do you? Did I get it right? I'm I'm sorry, but it's kind of choppy. Did I get it right? The classmate um takes got, his lunch. Yeah, takes oh. a piece of meat from her lunch, and, and then chase chase son. <laughs> oh, okay. So you should have chased her with your mongo. <laughs> I see. Uh -huh. But I know you took it well naman, ano, dozer, yeah? Okay. <laughs> that's, so, that's so nice. Okay, let's, let's ask Denzel Wade. What is your favorite, ano, what is your favorite food that your mom is prepare i uh, that your mom prepares for you fruits <laughs> ulam uh, how about ulam i have so much i don't even know which is my favorite oh uh, <laughs> she knows how, he knows how to answer huh? uh -huh. this <laughs> So, ayan, hindi siya makakapili kasi there's so there's much so to choose from. Mm. 
Yeah. He struggle, he said. Ano daw? He has a struggle. Yun daw yung struggle niya. Yeah. 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 So yun yung... <laughs> May struggle daw siya. What's your struggle? What's your struggle? I tell my classmates what to eat because I'm a plant eater. And some of my classmates just shout chicken joy. Oh, it is him. Chicken joy. Oh, okay. So yeah, regarding the chicken joy, because you know sometimes kids celebrate their birthdays in school, and of course the the very common um handa of the parents is the is Jollibee or Macdo. What what do you guys do when it's like that? Um, let's ask Kuya. Kuya Diesel. Uh, he said, can you repeat the question? <laughs> oh, okay, okay, okay. So sometimes, Kuya, of course, diba, your classmates will have a birthday and the most common handa or the most common food that the parents prepare is maybe they just order from Jollibee and they will just have chicken joy or beef steak like that. So what do you do if everybody is, you know, do they prepare... A do they prepare special food for you or what what happens, Kuya? Uh they will, they sometimes tell me ahead of time, like for example, my classmate had a birthday and their mom or dad will just tell ask me, Diesel, uh my son or daughter will have a birthday soon. Is it okay to prepare a meal for you? And then I'll just agree to it. And, and then, or if they don't tell me and I know about it, I'll just uh, pack my own. <laughs> so, um, madaling That's so sweet of the parents, parents, parents at the now. Yes, that yes. They yeah, they're very considerate as well sa mga preference. Oh, that's nice. Mm -hmm. And if not daw, he will just pack his own. If he knows there's a birthday and maybe the, the parents will not will not be able to prepare something for for him, he will just pack his own. Mm, why not? Ang galing. <laughs> thank you very much. Um, thank you very much, kids, boys, for sharing your oh, yes. story with us. Yes. And so... Yeah, let's go and I want to ask Mom Suzanne the next question. So, how what what can you say about your children's health because you know you have raised them since birth with plant-based diet. Um do they easily get get sick or have they been always this, you know, energetic boys? Okay, our eldest is now 13 and that's Diesel Wave. Uh and he's taller than me by two inches has special yeah <laughs> he has special o negative blood type which is very rare so because of that we are extra careful about viral infections like dengue or leptospirosis during rainy season because these conditions can cause bleeding his mm -hmm. whole life he was hospitalized twice for lowering of platelets during the fever, but turned out uh, to be only dengue, fever syndrome. So mm -hmm. one, one for a pimple in his nose, right, Kuya? He got infected after he, he picked on it, uh, on it, probably with dirty hands. And then all three of them were hospitalized together after they got vaccinated for a certain pneumonia causing bacteria. And then we really didn't want them to get those vaccines, but their doctor was persistent, so we gave it. We gave in. Mm. Uh, funny thing is, one week after vaccination, they all got very bad pneumonia. They got admitted by all three of them in the hospital. They had never got a pneumonia before, and yet after the vaccination, they all got it. Oh. <laughs> So um, the irony then, of life. <laughs> yeah, since then, I we really only like rely on healthy, plant-based, um, whole foods, and a healthy lifestyle instead of vaccines to keep their immune system optimal. Oh yeah. Then, uh, with God's blessings, we have not had the need for any hospitalizations. 
They are very strong and athletic boys. And since they were little, if you remember these boys, they ate raw potatoes and corn aside from carrots, especially this little boy beside me. <laughs> you remember it? Yes. When they were little, every time I would peel and chop uh, potatoes, I would wonder why after a lot of chopping, there would only be a little left on the plate until I found out that they would sneak behind me and steal raw potatoes <laughs> while I was chopping and also ate raw corn when I was about to boil them. Oh. <laughs> now uh, they could only they could peel carrots and potatoes by themselves. The eldest loves to cook at the moment while the other two the boys are starting to cook also freshly rice. They also love kamote, malunggay, tangkong, and I think that's because that's what I ate when I was pregnant with them. They even fight, they even fight over okra and tomatoes. <laughs> it isn't hard for us to feed them because they eat any kind of plant food and have also influenced some of their friends. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. <laughs> nice. Okay, so for those of you, thank you very much, ma'am, for that. So before we um we ask the last question for this interview, I would like to ask those who have questions for Ma'am Suzanne, for Doc Johan, even for the boys. If you have questions for them, please ask now please comment below your questions so we can um, do them right after this interview go ahead lorraine for the last and final question for dr johan okay dr johan this is your last question <laughs> okay <laughs> is plant-based diet nutritionally adequate for children well um yes it is uh, as you can obviously see my kids are very healthy <laughs> They've been on a plant-based diet ever since they were born. Uh, but don't take my word for it. I mean, go to the expert, right? To go to the National Nutrition Council of the Philippines. You can go to the U.S. and their equivalent of the National Nutrition Council. And they all will state, and they have stated that a plant-based whole food diet, as long as you prepare it adequately, you prepare enough of the different four food groups, and you feed it to your kids, they will grow up to be very healthy and very strong and lacking nothing really. Yes, yeah, so absolutely. Um, a plant-based whole food diet is nutritionally adequate for children. In fact, before I became a medical doctor, I was a biologist and based on our anatomy as human beings, um, nature tells us that we are herbivorous animals by design so i guess we were meant to eat plant-based whole foods to begin with and when we deviate from eating plant-based whole foods that's when we see chronic diseases develop and remember chronic diseases as a present kills 71 percent of society today so we know that when you deviate from eating plant-based whole foods that's when uh, diseases such as diabetes type 2 or heart disease or cancer uh, start developing in people. So plant-based whole food diet is really the way to go for kids and for adults alike. Yes, I so agree. I couldn't agree more. Um, there are so many researches and studies now that yun nga, um, actually, plant-based diet is the way to go for families, for individuals, for kids. Yun talaga ang ang ano ang pinaka the best na na diet for 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 everyone. Okay, so guys, thank you very much, the Manias family, for um, for joining us sa ating um, short interview this evening. So let's ask our viewers if they have questions for you guys. Let's just read one comment here. Sabi ni Liana um, Villamin, sabi niya, truly, Doc Johan, agree po sobrang affordable ng mga gulay. Munggo is life, sabi niya. Raising, 
raising vegan kids to two years old and four years old, and they are both tandem breastfeeding. Amazing, grabe, no? Wow, good, good job, Mommy Liana. She also said, ang cute Mommy Suzanne ni Bunso, same with four years old. Well, chopping carrots, especially ang palaya. Maya, maya, ubus na. Hindi pa naluluto. Wow, amazing. And... Um, Lorraine Villa Gomez said, "Go, go, go, neighbors!" Aba, may mga neighbors na nanood. <laughs> Neighbor, Mom Lorraine and Matthew. <laughs> yeah, there. And yeah, Mom Liana said also, "Plant-based kids are so energetic, smart, happy kiddos. They don't have vitamins since birth. Only pure breast milk and fruits and veggies wow. when they started solids." Wow, that's truly amazing. Because um yeah it's it's proven <laughs> so somebody thing, testified yes dr johan like kids were growing up so uh, they were recommended uh these nutritional drops and when we gave it to them they 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 started getting constipated and they were reacting to the medicine to the vitamin so we said no never mind we removed the vitamin that we just you know as they grew up as they we're able to eat solid food. We just introduced solid food to them, solid plant-based uh, food. Yeah, they were reacting I, to these multivitamins things. Yeah, they, they, they couldn't take that. <laughs> yeah, actually, Doc, I was also like, um, I also um, noticed when I gave my children those um, multivitamins, they were um, they were reacting to it as such as um, they were sneezing. After I I give the multivitamins, they are reacting to it. So, hindi din ako nagbibigay ng multivitamins. Although, you know, some of my some of my uh, friends and some parents that know me they say your kids are very small they're very tiny i think you have to give multivitamins for them like that but yeah how how can i be able to know that dog to address sure, that i'm sure that you guys are feeding your your kids the right way remember the four food groups every time you feed them every time there's a meal you just have to have the fruits whole grains beans and vegetables on their plate every single meal every single day and you're getting everything mm -hmm. the only vitamin that they really need is b12 mm -hmm. because uh, b12 you can't get that from plants or animals you actually get that from bacteria and so we give them a b12 supplement during times like these where you know people are afraid of getting infection you can give them a uh, vitamin c supplement you know just to top off what they're already eating but it's not really that necessary, especially when you're giving them lots of fruits and vegetables, fresh fruits and vegetables, yeah. I see. Uh, that's why. Because <laughs> me, I will just, you know, one, one food group per, <laughs> per meal. Yeah, a lot, of, a lot of my friends who go plant-based uh, fail to see that sometimes they're, they're not feeding the kids a complete meal. And you have to have those four food groups on your plate every single time because they each give different nutrients. Uh, one mm -hmm. will give more protein than vitamins. One will give more vitamins and minerals than, than carbohydrates or energy. So it has to be a balance of those four food groups every single meal. It's not like one group for one meal. One, so it has to be all the food groups. That way, the nutrients you are giving your kids are complete. You don't have to worry. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. I, I'm a guilty mom. <laughs> I think you look so guilty. <laughs> yeah, because sometimes, you know, sometimes you're very busy and you will just, um, you will just, you know, you will only think of this will make them full already. But actually, it's not. Thank you very much for... <laughs> For reminding me about that though because sometimes it's really like that i'm guilty you know but mom suzanne is a working mom and doc johan is a working dad so they're they're always like okay so yeah thank you very much this um interview is for me <laughs> eventually you'll find a way to balance everything out the time etc yeah 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 so let, let's um review that doc fruits and vegetables beans. Um, beans, be uh, whole grains 
And ano ba nakalimutan ko na end? <laughs> Four food groups: fruit, grains, beans, vegetables. Yes. Okay. So, yes, guys. Ito na ha. Yun. Ha. Fruits, grains, beans, and vegetables pa. Ma'am Jean. Ma'am Jean Pauline Velasco. Um, sabi niya, fruits, grains, beans, and... So, that's fruits, grains, beans, and vegetables. All the uh, four food groups ay dapat nasa plato ng ating mga anak and sa ating pamilya every time we eat. Not just... <laughs> One meal here and another food group in the next meal like that. Okay, thank you very much for that. So there's a question from Rai Rai Navarro. Please read, Lorraine. Uh, can you see the question, so, Lorraine? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Good PM Doc, I have a question. For people with chronic hypersensitivity reaction like severe hives and eczema, is there any type of veggies to avoid? Well, if you're hypersensitive or allergic to a certain food, you have to get tested in order for you to identify that. Uh, mm -hmm. There are specific things that you must be allergic to. Uh, you have to go to an allergologist to get skin tests to identify the specific allergen. Mm -hmm. If you avoid that allergen, then you won't have these hives, okay? Uh, it's the specific allergen that causes your, your hives and your uh your eczema or whatever the hypersensitivity reaction is so you just have to identify get get go to a, an allergologist they will do a skin test on you and identify what specific food is causing your uh, allergies it might not even be food it could be some chemical in your laundry soap for example or it could be uh you know these fabric conditioners that they use and especially for people with eczema, it could be a certain soap or detergent that you're using, or even your, your some of your beauty products. You know, sometimes people react to beauty products. We don't know, so we have to be able to identify the specific um, substance that is causing your allergies. And once we identify that, then we can do something about it. Uh, it's either you get a, get into a program where you are desensitized, or you simply just avoid the substance altogether. That's all you have to do. It's really identifying what really costs it. If it's, if it's a certain food, then avoid the food or get desensitized. They have programs for desensitization. Desensitization. Yeah. I see. Okay. So, yeah, there you go, Miss Rai Rai Navarro. Uh, and we have another question from Rachel Fiolog. Is it true that tofu is high in estrogen? Mm. Yes, it is true, but it's not regular estrogen. It is phytoestrogen. And the good thing about it is, uh, initially they thought that because it is a type of estrogen, that it would probably encourage uh, estrogen receptor positive tumors to grow. Okay. Today they're finding out that these phytoestrogens from soy actually block the receptors, the tumors that that are estrogen positive. So that instead of growing, they actually shrink in size, okay? So these studies are coming in today. That's why we are now uh, viewing um, tofu and soy products better in a better light because we have oh. more in the difference uh, in terms of growth of tumors that are, that, estrogen, that are estrogen positive. So instead of stimulating it, they actually block it. And what really causes these um, tumors to grow is the estrogen that we get from animals because animal estrogen is very similar to human estrogen. And human estrogen causes these tumors to grow. So the more, the more chicken you eat, the more fish you eat, these are, especially with the feeds that they feed these animals, they feed them with these specific hormones so that they grow faster in a, sh in a shorter period of time. So they can sell faster because <laughs> it's all about money now, right? It's just all about selling these, these poor animals uh, so that uh, they get rich and then the people they sell them to and the people who eat them get sick. So, you know, it's about changing your lifestyle, changing the way you eat in order for us to be healthy. Oh, that's good because I was also about to ask that. So thank you for asking yeah. that, Miss Rachel. So now 
now we know that it's not ano pala. Yeah. So, kasi parang sabi nila, hoy, don't eat tofu because it's like this, like that. Pero we're eating the chicken joy and all the Don't eat too much tofu. Do not eat too much. So, how much is too much, yeah. though? <laughs> three to four times or three to four meals a week is fine. A week. Okay. Okay, that's good because I all... <laughs> okay, okay, that's good. Instead of the tofu, which is already a processed product, uh, focus on the beans. So there's so many types of beans. There's lentils. There's even fresh beans like sitao, bagyu beans, cigarillas. Okay, so there's so many beans you can choose from. So many ways to cook the beans as well. Just you know, drop us a note some 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 one of these time, one of these days, and we'll we'll share our recipes with you. No worries. Wow. Yeah, <laughs> that would be really exciting. So, um, Rai Rai Navarro and Rachel Fiolog says thank you for that detailed answer now about estrogen in tofu. They have <laughs> learned a lot tonight from you guys. So, Foligo is I I can see Foligo here. Foligo is also watching. And Foligo says, truly inspiring Manez family. Hello, Foligo. Thank you for sponsoring our prizes tonight. Ayan. So if we don't have any more questions, um, I think Ma'am Suzanne and Doc Johan, if you can um you can promote your ministries and your, your advocacies too. This is the time. Lady first. <laughs> Ladies first. Go Ma'am Ma Suzanne. I think he has more to promote. <laughs> The husband has more to promote. I'll just promote uh, go eat plant based foods. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, <laughs> eat plant based whole foods. Um, we have a service that uh, we are promoting. Um, let me turn off my camera so that you see the logo. That is wow. our the doctor's wow. kitchen page. So um, the Doctor's Kitchen PH is a food service that we use for our patients. Uh, we are actually starting a complete health improvement program or CHIP for short. It's coming March 28th. And if you want to learn how to, how to improve your life in terms of health, how to live a very healthy lifestyle, uh, this complete health improvement program is online. So you don't have to come to our center to attend the program. You can be anywhere in Manila and anywhere in Cebu even, because we have um, we are partnering with certain food services who will deliver the food to your doorstep as we teach you how to prepare the food uh, online. So that is starting on March 28th. So please just stay tuned for announcements. There's so much that we want to share with you to help you guys to better your health. So there's a Facebook page, Doc. That's that's you, that's yeah. the Facebook page? Mm -hmm. Facebook page is, uh, just look for it, The Doctor's Kitchen. You can also look uh, search for my Facebook page, personal Facebook page. Just type in facebook.com slash Lifestyle Medicine Philippines. And uh, you'll, you'll find my Facebook page and all the information about The Doctor's Kitchen about tip, etc. Okay, nice. So don't forget to um, to like Doctor's Kitchen and Lifestyle Medicine. Tama. <laughs> Lifestyle Medicine <laughs> Philippines for updates, guys. Ayan. Okay. So thank you very much, Mom Suzanne, Doc Johan, Diesel. Thank you for us. Yeah, Diesel, um, Dozel, and Dunzel. <laughs> Dozer. 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 Yay. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> okay. So uh some Someone is asking for a link now, so maybe we can we can go find that link. You can you can type na lang po um lifestyle medicine Philippines on Facebook, and you can find Doc Manez there and also Doctor Skitchen. Ayan, thank you very much, Manez family. We are so blessed to have you in thank our you. program tonight. Thank, thank you, you thank you for inspiring well, us. Thank you. thank you for watching. <laughs> Yes, go Lorraine. Uh, 
All right, Lorraine. So what are your takeaways for today's talk? All right. So these are my takeaways for today's talk, no? That plant-based or lifestyle with our lifestyle, it really needs to be informed to a lot of people. Because very short lang or very conti lang yung mga people that knows about plant-based or whole food type of foods. And with Mom Suzanne telling us that um, with her lactation, you know, she was actually even a blessing to others, especially to some mothers who have problem with lactation, you know, from getting milk. So with Mom Suzanne, with her um, with their production of milk, she was a, she was a blessing as well to others. And of course, the most important is the four group, uh, four food groups, which is uh, yes. we must include always uh, the fruit, grains, beans, and uh, vegetables. So let me just say it, uh, let me just say this to our viewers that if they can do it so can we and to have a plant-based family is what i have you know is what i also dream of someday and uh with dr manyas with the family um uh is it has brought me closer to that dream and how about you Ati queen that's so nice huh? that's a nice dream lorraine <laughs> Yeah, for me as a home cook, I really try my best to serve healthy meals to my family because I love them and I want them to be healthy and strong all the time. But tonight, it's it has just, you know, it has gotten me to another level because of the four food groups. <laughs> now, now let's see how many interested parents are there in the comment section. So if, you are, if you're interested, please like and react if you are also, um, if you are also, we, we are moving to that you know direction of going plant-based for our family okay so that is why our health this health talk series is to spread awareness because we want everyone to achieve a healthy lifestyle for us to be able to enjoy more years with our family without problems with our health okay so that's it for our main course for today with some q a on the sides and thanks everyone who has sent his yeah. question I hope you find it satisfying and will give you some time to digest what you have just learned as we listen to a song from Clearly Hines. There is nothing he doesn't understand No Trouble I may have when no one seems to care. I know that he is there, he is near me. Yes, he's near me. There is nothing he will not do for me. All I have to do is ask him what. Each time I kneel to pray, I know he'll make a way cause he loves me, yes he loves me, my precious friend is Jesus, he is me when I call, my precious friend is Jesus. Picks me up when I fall. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil since my life's in his hands, my precious friend. Is Jesus. Since for me he shed his blood, he 
Yes, he died for me My precious friend is Jesus He's me when I call My precious friend is Jesus He picks me up when I fall song reminding us of our precious friend who is always there for us and no matter what it is only him who we can depend and we can find no greater love than that of his so when we ask him to help us with our help and the decisions we make for our family he will be there to guide and direct us because he is the one who knows what is really best for us and for our family we can trust him that he holds our life in his hands so there's nothing to worry because we are in good hands that's right lorraine i couldn't agree more so thank you very much clearly heinz for sharing that lovely song with us and now it's time for desserts <laughs> We are giving away 
prizes from Foligo. Three winners from our trivia game earlier. Foligo is an essential prebiotic that helps balance the human microbiome by boosting the growth of beneficial bacteria while inhibiting harmful ones. Thank you very much, Foligo, for sponsoring our prizes today. To our winners, we'll be sending you a private message on how to claim or ask you details on how we can send your prize. So congratulations to winner number one. Perlit Corpus. Congratulations. Yes, Lorraine, who is our winner number two? Our winner number two is Anjanat Orozco Cuevas. Congratulations, Dai. And our third winner, last but not the least, we have Mary Burns Siliar. Ayan. Congratulations. <laughs> All right, so there you have it, guys. Congratulations, congratulations again to those top three, uh, to our winners, and congratulations also to all who have stayed with us throughout the duration of our four-course meal. And we hope that you were filled, satisfied, and blessed with all the things that you have, we have learned today. Yes, so join us again next, next month. That's in April. And we have another guest who will share with us her story on how diet and lifestyle changes made a big difference in her life. So please follow us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Plated Prescription so you will be updated on our upcoming videos and talk shows. We are happy that you are here and we hope to see you again next time. I am Queenie. And I am Lorraine. And here... Health is precious, and here at Dr. Stable, we'll help you make the right choices for you and your family. Thanks for watching! Bye! <laughs>